Hi everyone, it's Justine. Finding your own style is probably one of the biggest challenges in fashion. It's also a very ambitious title for our video, I'm well aware. Let's say it's going to be an attempt. You get influenced by trends, by celebrities, by people around you and what they think, by the media, and at the end you don't really know anymore what to think and where to start. When you research articles on that topic, they tell you, well, just think of the clothes you like, or are you more classic or avant-garde? And I always think, well, if you knew, you wouldn't be researching it, right? <laughs> so in this video, I would like to give you concrete tips to help you in the process of finding your personal style, six steps to be precise. And in case you wonder, I would actually use a very similar method for men as well. But now it's about women, let's go. First of all, before you look anywhere, you need to know what your body type is. If you don't know that, you'll end up with clothes that you don't like to wear, that you don't feel good in, but you won't know why they're not working. If you have watched my series about body types, then you know what you are. If not, look in the description box below, you'll find all the links to find out what you are. Number two, find your uniform, so to speak. It's kind of a basic look that you love to wear, but it's not what you would wear at home on weekends. It has to take into consideration your life and your job. If you work in business in a large corporation, then your uniform is gonna be much more formal than if you work in a creative field, for instance. Fashion designers often have so-called uniforms, a way they dress like every day of the year because it's their style and they have found that it's working for them. A uniform can be dressed up or down with shoes, accessories, makeup, etc. potentially endlessly. That's what I mean with a uniform and that's what you need. That's what you're looking for. Number three, find one person, potentially a celebrity, who has your body type and of whom you would like to wear the clothes. It's easier if that person is alive rather than from the past because you'll find easily pictures for inspiration purposes, it's gonna be easier than if you take somebody from a past decade. However, for instance, for an hourglass body type, you might find that the beauty ideal in the 50s fitted better, so you actually will find more examples in the 50s. The advantage of taking somebody who is a celebrity is that it's easier to collect pictures. But if you take, let's say, Marilyn Monroe, is the example, then you're gonna be stuck with the same 10 pictures that everybody knows and has seen before. So you will look like you're trying to look like Marilyn Monroe because the reference is too obvious, she's just too famous. So I would recommend you go for somebody less famous if you take a celebrity or with somebody you know and can talk with. It's even easier to get tips and ideas. Once you have chosen the person, collect pictures and try to take a helicopter view above the whole thing and say, okay, how can I describe that style in three words? Those three words from now on are your guideline. Every time you go shopping, whatever you buy, it has to match those words. Step four, define your color palette. For this, you need to know beforehand if your undertone is warm or cool. I did a separate dedicated video on this, which I'm gonna link in the description below you need to know your undertone before you start. And then pick colors, proper hues that you like and you feel make you look radiant and healthy. You need both for the color to be qualified to enter your color palette. I would start with neutrals. I take for instance black or navy, then white or beige cream, and then a brown or a gray, and then I'd add up to five hues proper color, different ones. Think that prints come on top of that and they're usually composed of more colors, so it's already a quite colorful wardrobe. I think it's enough for a start. When you pick your hues, remember that you also chose the intensity of it and the value and chroma. <laughs> so it means concretely, is the color pure blue or is it mixed with white or black? Is it bright, is it dull? You have a ton of variations. There is not just blue, there are a ton of different blues so you need to be really precise in that exercise and find the blue that works for you that will be one of your colors etc ideally gather all those colors together they can be colored shapes they can be garments they can be pictures put all that together take one picture that you have with you when you go shopping whatever you buy compare with this benchmark to make sure the blue is the blue you wanted the gray the gray you wanted so that you don't buy things you thought would match the color palette, but actually you don't. Number five, let's talk about shapes and fit. 
very important category. You need to make a sort of little list, like a guideline, examples. Which skirt length do you like and feel good in? Do you like when the fit is skin tight or tailored in the right places or frankly boxy? The answer to that question will influence the kind of fabrics you will naturally gravitate towards, so it's an important one. Do you like solid colors only or eventually also prints or stripes or patterns, etc.? Do not feel like you should maybe try this because everybody's saying it's on trend. The more important question is always, will that fit my body? Number six, shoes and accessories. Usually underrated, yet they can do a lot to style your uniform up or down. Again, an example of question uh, can be, do you like your accessories to be big or small? Do you like one statement piece or a combination of several accessories, including jewelry? Do you like your shoes to be eye-catching, color blocking, making a statement of their own, or should they match your outfit? I can speak for myself. Personally, my wardrobe mainly looks black, neutral, and muted colors. But my shoes, which you never see on YouTube, I'm aware, <laughs> are really colorful, and I love it. Now that you've gathered different ideas, thoughts, pictures, visuals, everything you have so far. The question is always, how do I keep all of that together in one place so that I can actually draw onto my thoughts and my guidelines when I need them when I go shopping? I would typically use Pinterest. Pin, pin, pin everything you like and see. If you're not sure, pin it. You can always erase it later. Consider that a draft or a living document. Having everything on one page is tremendously useful for editing and reflecting later on what you like, why it would fit you, etc. It's just a lot easier to compare when everything is on one page. Kick out everything you don't absolutely like and in the end you'll have like, what, 20 pictures left? Those 20 fit on one screen. That's all you need. Make a screenshot if you want. You can take it shopping with you. And if you chose more than one person as your style icon, then you can put all those people together on one board and compare across all those people. What do they have in common? And you get your three words as well. It's just visually a lot easier, I think. The advantage of Pinterest not being set in stone is that it's just like your style. Your style will keep evolving forever. And then new visuals will come in and others will get kicked out. That's all part of the process. And as you practice more and more, your style self-confidence will grow naturally. Notice that I did not mention trends as a point in finding your style. Trends are suggestions. What matters a lot more is your style. Trends go, style stays. Coco Chanel. If you found some useful food for thought or tips in this video, give it a thumb up. Thank you very much. Questions in the comments below, as always. I'm expecting quite a few on this topic. As you go through the process, it's really normal. I'll do my best to answer as many of those questions as I can. New videos every Wednesday and Sunday on this channel. Take care. Bye-bye.